Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host Justin Baker and I are here for you as we continue ranking the top players from every country. I know you've been waiting for it. We've said we were going to get to it. We instead did a preview for every single team across the National Hockey League, all the preliminary rounds of the playoffs. If you missed that, subscribe to the show. Go back and listen to that. But Justin, we are here to rank the top 10 Finnish born NHL players of all time. We are, uh, I didn't really include any like huge international guys, like in terms of like, oh, this guy who never played in the NHL who had a good run at some point. I didn't include those. Maybe you did. I did not. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, these are Finnish born hockey players, mine, all NHL guys. Justin, did you, uh, you're, the way you're looking at me, you did something a little different. No, I actually didn't include oh, okay. any international guys. I I had a hard time looking at their stats. And like to be quite honest, don't get me wrong, the SM Lingua, or however you pronounce that, uh, the Swedish League, the Finnish... The, the Finnish League. The Finnish League, yeah. Um, boy, yeah, I just... You know, because of the lack of talent, it's different from like the KHL where there's, you know... The talent, in my opinion, is a little bit better, and I think a lot of those those European leagues are starting to get bigger and better. But honestly, a lot of these players, when you're looking at the early 2000s, late 90s, a lot of that international, you know, those yeah, the leagues, best ones came over. Yeah, and they, they all the were here. Of so course, made it a little a little bit more difficult. It's, it's not like the like the Russians. There's a clear like there's a few that Trechek and you know you've right. got these guys where they never had the chance to play in the NHL, and they are definitely unbelievable players. Um, that may exist for the the Finnish team as well. If you are out there and you're like, I know they're going to forget my guy, uh, hit us on Twitter at OT Hockey Talk. Let us know who we missed. Uh, if you haven't listened to the rest of our top tens, you can just they're littered throughout the last year or so worth of episodes. So you can always go back and find those old, uh, you know, whatever team is your favorite. Just go search for it and you'll find it. Uh, we do some just mists guys who narrowly escape our list and uh justin i want to hear you're just missed yeah you might not like one of the names on my list but i think he's legitimately one year away from cracking this top 10 uh the first name on my just missed is sasha barkoff of the florida panthers to me one of the best two-way centers in the game right now obviously you know constantly making nhl.com's list of most underrated players and at this point i don't know why because nobody underrates him anymore but to me. I, yeah, that's true. He was underrated like his second year in the league. Right. And that's about it. Um, so he makes my just miss. Yeah. I mean, nevertheless, he did He did get taken before Seth Jones. He did. Who would you rather have, Seth Jones or Alex Barkoff? Man, that's, that's, that's a very good question. Because, a yeah. A top center or a top D man? Right. That's a very good question. Um, a debate for another show. What, a, what an, oh, an early beginning to that draft, though. You have McKinnon. You have Barkov. You got Seth Jones, and I believe the other one was Jonathan Drouin was taken at two. He was. So Tampa Bay is the one that missed out because <laughs> instead of getting Seth Jones or Alexander Barkov, they now I guess they now have uh, Sergachev. He better, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just he better transform them real quick, or they're gonna look like idiots. Yeah, yeah. Um, my list, I'll say my list is missing current NHL players. Uh, other than the only current NHL player I have on my list, I have two that are on my list, uh, and they are long-standing veteran players. I left. I mean, let's in ten years, I think you could see a very different Finnish list because Patrick Laine, Miko Rantanen, Sebastian Ajo. You mentioned Sasha Barkov. I mean, even like Michael Granlund to to a certain extent, depending on what happens here with with the rest of his career. Uh, Ristolainen may end up being one of the top five Finnish defensemen all time. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's some good Finnish players that are in their prime right now. These lists will change, but for now, I left my list as kind of the like this classic the the best performers in their time uh those guys just haven't had enough time to b- build up their stats enough for me to take any of these guys off of it so yeah, won't disagree with you i think aho he's again a couple years away he'll definitely crack this list miko ratten in for sure yeah so give it a few um i just missed 
One guy, Ole Jokinen, he's the fourth all-time Finnish scorer, 750 points in 1,231 games, not to mention his 1,071 penalty minutes. He made the playoffs one time in his entire NHL career, and he played in a six-game series for the Calgary Flames in which he had five points. Solid playoff performer, five points in six games. He played over... Over 1,200 NHL games and played six playoff games. Wow. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, like, that's unfortunate. I wonder if there's anybody who has played more games than Jokinen and played less playoff games. That would be an that's interesting a great uh, question. Yeah. We'll find it. We'll find it and we'll tweet it. Uh, so he misses my list. It's kind of based on his lack of playoff success and, or, uh, I mean, lack of going to the playoffs. Not his fault that he played for. Some pretty bad Panthers team. I mean, everyone that he was on was bad. Oh, the late '90s Kings, late late two thousand or late '90s Islanders. Uh, he played. He was obviously on the Panthers for quite some time. The vast majority of his career for about nine seasons. Then he like bounces bounces around the Coyotes, the Flames, the Rangers, back to the Flames, to the Jets, to the Preds, to the Leafs, and to the Blues. He played for three teams in his last year in the league, but. Yeah, made my just missed as well. And uh, another name, I don't know if he made your list or your just missed, but uh, Miku Koivu, another guy, yeah. current NHLer that, uh, you know, unfortunately just, you know, uh, not a lot of success in terms of postseason. Uh, I mean, obviously more games played than Holy Jokin, but uh, yeah, just doesn't have the hardware. You know, again, he finishes, I think he's fifth or sixth all time in terms of, fifth all time, yeah, in terms of finished players in the NHL, but to me, just. You know, he's just one of those middle of the road type of guys. Just never really was dominant, but was always good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for that reason, he's my number ten. That's a Perfect. nice little transition there. Uh, yeah, Miko Koivu. I, you know, played for the same team his entire career. That's pretty stinking unique. And he has nineteen medals for Finland. Uh, that's very hard to ignore, especially since even my number one on this list only has six. Wow. So you can, I mean, he's got uh, a gold in the U18 and a bronze. He's got a silver and a bronze in the U20. He has a gold, two silvers, and two bronze in the world championships. He's got a silver and a bronze in the Olympic medals. And then in the Finnish championships, he won a gold and a silver. So he, he certainly has had a really good international career as well. Uh, that factors in for me, it was like, all right, NHL first. And then, you know, you're going to make the list based on maybe something that you did overseas as well. So he certainly had his his years internationally. He played very, very well uh, in the playoffs. Decent 28 points, 55 games, about point every other game. So played pretty solid and in international play. I mean, even at, like in the Olympics, he was OK. But the rest of it, you know, he's putting up pretty good 46 points in 56 games in the world championships. Pretty good when you're going against some of the world's best. Uh, so that's uh, that's my number 10. Who slid into your list right at number 10? All right. At number 10 was actually a guy who was drafted uh, in the 10th round and finished out his career winning the Stanley Cup finally. That is Kimo Timonen, uh-huh. Chicago Blackhawks. Yes. Or yeah. better known as a Philadelphia Flyer. But again, you talk about right all these medals. I mean, he sneakily has 11 medals with the Finnish team. Uh, obviously, three bronze, one silver. I mean, that's that's one thing about the finish that I, I discovered more and more. The, the more research I did, they're sneakily good in yeah. the Olympics oh, yeah. and international play. Like, they don't ever dominate, but they, I mean, in the last 25 years, they've been just quiet under the radar. Just yep. And I remember, I think it was 2010, when they beat USA, or 2014, that was it, yeah. 14, when they beat USA 5 to nothing in the bronze medal game. And it was just, it was an embarrassment for USA because they were expected to compete for a gold and dominate with Patrick right. Kane and... I mean, it just it didn't work out well for them at all, and uh, yeah. But uh, again, this is a guy who just steadily just always was solid on the back end for Philadelphia. When I watched him play, I remember him just being the number one go to guy on that blue line for that team for so many years, and he was always consistent, right? Always putting up, I mean, decent numbers. You look at his seasons between Nashville and Philly. I mean, it was consistent forty, fifty points almost every single year. And, and I mean, while again he wasn't dominant in terms of offensive production like some guys were putting up 70 80 points like you couple, know a couple 50 point seasons yeah. in a row there 
But I mean, hey, during the time, especially early two thousands, if you were getting forty, fifty points out of a defenseman, that was that was pretty dang good. Yeah, he had uh, uh, three out of four seasons where he had at least twelve goals. Pretty yeah. solid. Yeah, he, he could, yeah could score some goals, and I he also is on my list. He actually is uh, is a little higher on my list. Okay, well we'll get there. So let's go to number nine. Uh, my number nine is a guy who. Played much earlier than most. Uh, played on some of these Edmonton Oilers teams. Uh, put up some big points. Also had a lot of penalty minutes. Played a little bit shorter of a career. Uh, but that is Essa Tikkanen. My number nine as well. Okay. All right. I had. I mean, he was he was a, a, a goal scorer early on in his career. I mean, he had he went 34, 23, 31, 30, 27. And then he kind of became this guy that was more of a more of a bruiser like third line type of guy who he could put up some decent points but uh wasn't he couldn't stay healthy that certainly didn't help him but he did win five stanley cups that doesn't hurt <laughs> he uh he won a stanley cup in 80 with the oilers he won four of them uh no i think he won, he yeah, won five he won, with the oilers he won four with the oilers he wins he won one with the rangers didn't he 94 yeah right? okay yeah you're right he wins the one with the rangers he was act. i, I think that he he went over with Messier to the Rangers because yeah, obviously you're right. they were teammates in, in Edmonton yeah. and uh, and he does have the uh, the bronze medal in the Olympics in 1998 for Finland yeah uh, he was, was the not going on one he was the guy I think you know obviously Gretzky was the offensive juggernaut but he was the guy that went out there and you know after a few years in the NHL they found a knack for him being that defensive like just agitator and he would be that guy that they would pair up against the other team's top lines and shut him down and, and more often than not he was going point for point with most guys and you know of course when you have Gretzky on another line just putting up even more points that yep. that your team's not going to succeed so you know my my real first memory of Esatikinen was actually when he was on the Capitals because the Capitals went to the finals in 98 when he was there. His yes. only, I think his only year, yep, his only year with the Capitals, he got traded there at the deadline from the Florida Panthers and went there, had a decent, like, a decent little regular season, rest of the regular season, and then played, he played more playoff games and regular season games that year for the Capitals. <laughs> uh, but that was kind of where I remembered him because some of those games because the capitals in the eastern conference finals they pl- they went up against dominic Hoshik and the sabers and that was no one was no one could score of course they end up they end up beating them uh the capitals end up beating the sabers and i remember being so happy cuz for whatever reason my dad convinced me that i needed to hate dominic Hoshik cuz he was just <laughs> oh he's so lucky i remember my dad oh, he's so lucky <laughs> We we'll have to have my dad on to talk about some. Uh, I would love to because I, the only, I mean, he listens to the show. Hi, Dad. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Paul. <laughs> you know what you're doing. You know, if if you can't get your dad to listen to something, then you probably aren't very good. That's true. Well, I will say about <laughs> my, my dad will only listen to this if we're talking NHRA and race cars. So that's that's fine. We'll that's, shift gears maybe one yeah, show. Yeah, we'll do we'll do an overtime racing show or something. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have at number nine Tekken in as well. My number eight is the man you had at number 10, Kimo Timonen, who I actually really remember as a Nashville Predator for some reason. It's just because my best friend in high school, he was a big Predators guy. Okay. And he always talked up Kimo Timonen. Oh, he's one of them under, Dude, underrated the defensive the factory. That's, yes, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. It was uh, Kimo Timonen and Andy Delmore. Oh, yeah. I think Andy Delmore had like 20 goals in a year. <laughs> And uh, he was just too slow once the lockout happened and everybody came back and the rules changed. Uh, okay, who's your number eight? All right, number eight for me, the all-time winningest and all-time games played goaltender for this uh, country, and that is Pekka Rene. Wow, at number eight? At number eight, yeah. I, You know what? I, you know I, he won a Vesna. I do know like he won a Vesna. the best player <laughs> at his position. Right. Okay. But it's funny to me, when you look at the year he won a Vesna, he didn't finish in the top 10 in Hart Trophy voting, which to me, you know, is a sign that maybe, you know, don't get me wrong, goaltending was still good, but scoring was better. Scoring was more important, right? He, he came in at number 12 in the Hart voting that year. And you know what? His stats, stats were good. Eight shutouts, 927 save percentage. So you can't really knock him. But 
there were too many inconsistent years where he kind of almost had that Craig Anderson look for like a short five, six year window where he was just up and down every other year. And I, I mean, 27 and a half goals saved above average. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was pretty dang good. Um, but I will say he's, he's a solid goaltender. Obviously he um, actually, he, in, in 2010, 11, he had 31, he basically had 32 goals saved above average. And he, he finished second in heart trophy voting fourth and or fourth in heart trophy voting second in Vesna and was on the second all-star team. Uh, wow. I probably think, a better year. Yeah. <laughs> I think year. we're 2.12 goals against and a nine three Oh save percentage. Yeah. A little bit better year. on a bad, like on a not great predators team. Yeah. I think we're it kind of, he kind of got knocked down a couple pegs for me was one, the inconsistencies, but then two, you talk about goal saved above average. I looked at his playoffs goal saved above average and more years than, than not, He's letting a negative goal saved above the average. Sometimes which, he will, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which didn't help his case at all, especially when you look at some of these other Finnish goaltenders on my list. There's two more on here. Um, what they did for their respective teams, and I think some years they carried them more than Pekka maybe carried the Predators, and I think that kind of hurt his case a little bit for me. Okay, all right. Pekka Rene, the best goalie ever to play out of Finland, and he's your number seven. That's uh, Number eight. Number eight, yeah, my bad. Even less. <laughs> even lower. Um Needless to say, the way that I'm talking to you right now, he's he is higher on my list. I, yeah, uh, but I'm he definitely upset. made my list. Uh, you you tend to uh, just rake goalies over the coals, even though you <laughs> you supposedly love goalies. Uh, I've had lists where I had like four goalies and you had one. Yeah, a little higher standard here on this side of the table. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> apparently, uh, okay. My number seven is a he a guy who captain of the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, to me, for my money, one of the best to come out of to come out of Finland in terms of centers. Uh, he's the third all-time scoring center and and forward. Eleven hundred twenty-four games played, eight hundred thirty-two points. That is Saku Koivu. Uh, also had thirteen medals, four in the Olympics. So definitely a guy who has contributed not just in the NHL, but also on an international stage, uh, all four of Finland's Olympic medals, like since the NHL players sure. went to. Uh, I, so he also had some really nice seasons with the Montreal Canadiens, 71 points in 2002-03 and 75 points in 06-07. And this is a time where it was not easy to put up big points too. Like you mentioned, I mean, 71 points in 2002-03 is a solid year with 50 assists as well. Uh, he was the 27th in, in league scoring, so uh, definitely in the upper echelon there. Yeah, I won't disagree with it. I uh, I have him a little bit higher, um, obviously, coming in at number six for me, so we'll oh, get to okay. that in a minute. All right, all right. Uh, so who do you have at number seven? Number seven, a guy who probably would have jumped Saku Koivu had he had maybe, um, you know, a little bit more longevity. I think, you know, we'll we'll see because he had seven straight seasons of 70-plus games played, and that's a goaltender for me, uh, Mika Kippersoft. Man, you just hate goalies. <laughs> I will say he is the first Finnish goalie to ever win a Vesna, too. Huh. little tidbit there. Huh. Um, Rene the second. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I don't know. Actually, maybe Tuka Rask was. I got to I gotta double check that. So, um, No, Tuka Rask isn't Finnish. Yes, he is. No. Yeah, he's from Finland. No. Yeah, look it up. Um, so, <laughs> anyways. Uh, so, oh, he, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe you got an asterisk to put wow. on your list there. Wow, how did I, how did I not, uh, not pick up on this? <laughs> yeah, so back to Mr. Kippersoff. I mean, there was a small stretch there, like we talked about, seven straight seasons of 70 plus games but obviously he had four seasons uh finishing top five in terms of Vesna voting wins at once and he actually had three seasons finishing top five in terms of heart trophy voting which for a goaltender outside of you know when you talk about Dominic Hasek Brodeur and Roy during that era that's pretty dang good he was unbelievable yeah he he had a small like a four or five year window where he was just so dominant I feel like we just talked about him because we just did the Calgary Flames right. not too long ago uh we also broke down the Calgary Flames playoff series, so I feel like we've been talking a lot about the Calgary Flames. But yeah, he un- amazing. He's he's higher on my list as well. Uh, Tuka Rask just missed my list apparently. <laughs> yeah, so not good, uh, not good enough. <laughs> not you, good enough. I mean, he did 
he has he did played choke. fewer games than Carrie Let. He's won fewer games than Carrie Lettinen. So just wow. saying, Carrie Lettinen didn't make my list. You forget about that hit too. Yeah, yeah. So go back, listen to our Calgary uh, show, and you'll see why. Um, maybe a little bit more why Kippersoft is here on the list for me. Just incredible goaltender for for a little period of time. And again, had he um, played a little bit longer and been a little bit more dominant from a few more years, you know, he probably would have jumped Saku Koivu. For me, who comes in at number six? All right. Uh, my number six is the first defenseman to appear on my list, and that is Teppo Newmanen. Uh, he is the all-time scoring Finnish defenseman, 637 points in 1,372 games. Uh, I mean, Teppo Newmanen, I he was a long time like Winnipeg Jets. The Coyote it went over as the you know the Coyotes go to Phoenix, and he stays there for another seven years with them. So I mean, with an organization basically for 15 plus years, he does you know he goes to to Dallas and then to Buffalo for a little bit kind of on the tail end of his career, but a guy who just consistent 40 point guy for the most part, you know, hovering around 40, sometimes got 50, sometimes was in the thirties, but uh, always, you know, almost like a point every other game type of defenseman. And I always remember that he, he was a guy who used his size it was kind of this like all around guy could put up points. He could play on the power play. He could make the right decisions in the defensive zone. He never got a lot of penalties. And like his most, his highest penalty minute season is 36 penalty minutes. Now that's, that's very good for a, like, and he was a, you know, he was one of the top defensemen on his team. And so to only get 36 penalty minutes, you know, you're doing something right when you're out on the ice. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of relates to the fact that you can rely on this guy to be there when you need him for penalty killing, right? Again, if your top defenseman's in the box all the time, you, you're you having a more difficult time now killing penalties and rotating guys. Now you got to go to your third pairing to try to throw somebody out there. And um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of looked at him and, uh, you know, uh, my number 10 defenseman there, uh, uh, gosh, Kimo Tempadin, sorry, or not. Oh, Kimo Tiemann. Yeah, oh, yeah, Tiemann, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot yep. Tiemann was on my list at eight, but, uh, but he's the first one to be on my list. Like, he's yeah, my number put him six. On there. I don't have a defenseman higher than him. Right. Okay. okay. So when you, yeah, when you look at guys that put up 40, 50 points, right, they're just consistently putting up 40 point seasons. The difference with, you know, Teppo Newman and I, I always found was he was just harder to play against, right? He just, he used his body so well. He, he was never the fastest guy on the ice, but he was always in great positioning every time. Yeah. Always used to stick well, knew how to use his reach, and just, I mean, again, you talk about the penalty minutes, so obviously he's not having to chase guys, having to hook guys, and again, I... And, and that's, a, I know that some of that's a time when... Uh, a little easier to get away with to it. do that, yeah. but he comes back from the lockout, is on a brand new team on the Buffalo Sabres. He, he did he did have his, it, like, his most success in terms of the playoffs, 05 to 07 with the Sabres. He actually went to the second and third rounds. Uh, before that, he never went past the first round in the playoffs. Uh, but he still, I mean, 32 penalty minutes and 22 penalty minutes. So he was still able to never, still never higher than 36 penalty minutes, even after the game changed. And he's 34 years old, 35 years old, still playing. He he didn't make the, those types of mistakes. So right. I think a guy who maybe is a little, a little, a little lesser known, but in terms of Finnish defensemen, they're just, I mean, you've got Teppo Numanen and Kimo Tiemannen. Uh Yurke Lume, I I thought about him for a split second. Uh, just kind of always your like third, third, four, three, four type of defenseman. Uh, you know, there's there's some like Sammy Sallow. He's a nice defenseman. Had a big shot from the blue line yes, for the did. Vancouver Canucks for a while. Yanni Ninema was a was a good solid defenseman for a few different teams, but just none of them made that type of impact. I mean, and Newman and obviously the all time scoring finished defenseman and played the most games out of any finished defenseman. And is, I think like what third or fourth all time in games, second, second, most, in second, games, most yeah. in game. So, all right, uh, let's head on into the top five. Yeah. Shall we? So we just talked about my number five, Teppo Newman and right okay. there. So made it real easy. So I got six at Koivu, five Teppo Newman. And then your number five is my number five is, Mika Koi, Mika 
Kippersov. Kippersov. Okay. Koivu was a while ago. <laughs> Mika Kippersov. I, I put Kippersov in the top five. I'm going at this point. I'm I'm going trophies. Like you better have won something at this point. I hope so. Whether it's like, man, some like serious Stanley Cupage or uh, or something. You you probably need to have won some awards because there are some really great all time Finnish players, and uh, he of course won the Vesna, almost won the Hart a few times. Uh, was up for the Vesna multiple times. So Mika Kiprasov comes in at my number five. And who's your number four? Wow. So we're not going to see Valtteri Fipula in your top five. No, then. no. Filpula, you know, he just, he needed to have a few extra seasons <laughs> of goodness. You All know, right. who knows? He might, he might last another five, six years and, and go along and, there you go. And yeah. Find himself way up in points somehow, you know, 40 points a year. Maybe crack that top 10. Boost okay. him up a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, number four for me, I've got a guy who is probably one of the the top. I mean, when you talk about defensive forwards, like Mark Stone is trying to be what this guy was for so many years with the Dallas Stars, and that's Yuri Lightning for me. Um, you talk about a defensive forwards, three Selkie trophies, and he was like, you know, the guy that guys who weren't centers wanted to play defense like, right? And again, it's 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 always been so hard to win that trophy without being a, a centerman. And so, again, he wins two in a row early on in his career, and then a few years later gets another one. But again, this guy consistently for the Selkie every single season, he was in the top. You know, it seemed like top ten, top twenty at least. And then always a lady being trophy runner up, or you know, in the in the conversation basically, you know, every year, even though. Again, he he wasn't a guy that got a lot of penalty minutes either. He was yeah, still no more than 30, 30 penalty minutes is the most he ever had as a defensive forward. Right. A guy who was still, I mean, he was good for 40, 50 points every year. He scored 20. I mean, he scored 30, 33 one year. Yeah, he scored 30 twice. Six. I mean, like you talk about, he's just, he was reliable. You knew what you're getting out of him. He was a great second line winger to have and who could rotate into your top spot, but also played against the team's top forwards and, to me, that just that meant a lot, and again, that just you talk about it hardware, right? Because that's what it means at this point. You got to talk about guys that that have gotten the hardware, and um, you know, again, he got you know lucky enough to get a Stanley Cup with Dallas, but um, you know, outside of that, and you know, not really the big offensive producer that maybe some of these other guys on our list are. Sure, yeah, and, and played in a time, played for a team, and played in a time where goal scoring was definitely down. I mean. Ken Hitchcock wasn't Get, like yeah. I yeah. was gonna say go ahead and give the give the Selkie Trophy to Ken Hitchcock because that was, I mean he Yuri Lettinen was like the ideal Ken Hitchcock player. Put me up fifty points a year, right? And grind <laughs> and never get a penalty. Play yeah. perfect defensive hockey. We've got Madonna and Brett Hall scoring goals. You go ahead and play defense. So there and, you go. And drafted by the Minnesota North Stars, only played for the Dallas Stars. Yeah, that's impressive. Pretty cool. Uh, he is my number four, okay. so that takes care of that. Beautiful. Uh, number three for me was Pekka Rene. Okay, I'm I'm putting Pekka above Mika Kiprasov. Just uh, I, it's to me it's it's almost a little bit of a toss up between the two. He has played the most games, and he's continuing. You know, at this point, continuing to play games, he has the most wins all time, the most shutouts all time. The most goals of all time tied with Mika Noranen. Wow. Who would have thought someone named Mika Noranen scored a goal? <laughs> <laughs> a goaltender. I don't I don't know when this happened, but he It wasn't for the NHL. He uh no, this these are NHL stats. Really? Yeah. He had one point his whole career. He played in seventy one games and he scored a goal. Wow. Okay. He I was twenty three and thirty two. Check my stats here. My gosh, I'm embarrassed. And uh, he scored a goal. It would have been for uh, the Buffalo. Buffalo. I oh, know he like he was a backup goaltender. Yeah, he played like ten games for the Sabers that year. He played for the Sabers for the most part. Looks like NHL totals seventy one games. All right. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna find. <laughs> what you're gonna <laughs> find. He played for the Vancouver Canucks and the Sabers, and that's it. And he played seventy one total games. The most games he ever played in a year in the NHL was thirty five in oh three oh four for the Sabers. So it must have been Dominic H- No, it was after Dominic Hoshik left. Ryan Miller. It was like, was Ryan Miller there yet? I think so. Or was that well, Martin Biron? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're right. No Martin wonder Biron. he played so many games. <laughs> um, okay. Well, my, okay. My, so I said my number, my number three. Number three, Pecorine, yeah. And, and we've already, we've talked about him 
plenty. Uh, I know that you're not quite as high on him, but obviously he's he has currently all the numbers yeah. in terms of finished goaltenders, and he is he has been a top three, top five goaltender in multiple years throughout his career. Maybe he didn't have all the best years all the time, but he also had such a defensive juggernaut in front of him that he's got less shots on goal because of it. And then you're kind of in a position where when you let in a few goals, all your stats look worse. So yeah, um, I'll blame it on that. <laughs> all right, perfect. So for me, uh, number three, I'm going to keep it with the goaltenders, and that's um, Tuka Rask. Yeah. Tuki. Guy who missed your list. Um, obviously, you look at... Just hate I hate I can't. You know, Andrew Raycroft and him just haunt my dreams. So <laughs> I, will I pretend s- he never happened. Yeah, okay. Um, you know what? Obviously, there's there's the, the mantra around the fact that he is a Game 7 choke, right? I mean, obviously, we saw it last year. Just <laughs> not ideal, but out, I mean, you look at everything outside of that, and he puts up the numbers every single year. Sure. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. You look at these, say, percentages he has here and just... They're he is the all-time ridiculous. leader in goals against or in uh, save percentage for Finnish goaltenders. Yeah, just slightly higher than Antti Ranta. All right, and yeah. UC Saros comes in, takes over for Tim Thomas. Nine thirty-one, nine twenty-nine, nine twenty-nine, nine thirty, nine twenty-two. I mean, just ridiculous. And it doesn't hurt that you're playing in front of a really good defensive hockey team, much like Pekka and A did. But I will say Boston was probably a little better at it, in my opinion. Um, but regardless, I mean, he still had to show up. He still had to back up that team, and he did. They won a Stanley Cup. Obviously, he wasn't the yeah. guy leading the charge there. He won but a Vesna. Yeah, thirteen four. He got his Vesna, and he won the Jennings this year. He did. Yeah, Best, absolutely. Uh, Which is surprising that it actually took this long for him to get the Jennings, as well as Boston plays defensively. Him and Halak, right? Yeah, which uh, I think Halak signed a two year extension, so he'll be hanging around, I believe. So, right. uh, but yeah, for number three for me, Tuka Rask. Okay. Uh, let's. I think our top two are going to be the same because there's only two they guys should. left that uh, that should be on the list. So I'll just uh, you know I'll start with my number two, and that is Yari Curry. As is mine. Thirteen hundred and ninety-eight points. Couldn't stick around to get fourteen hundred. Uh, twelve hundred and fifty-one games scored over six hundred goals. Six hundred and one goals. To be exact, uh, 118 goals per game or points per game is the highest points per game and goals per game finish born player of all time with at least 20 games played in their career. So uh, certainly some lofty numbers on top of that. He's got five Stanley Cups, all with the Edmonton Oilers, went to the Stanley Cup finals with the L.A. Kings in 1993, only to lose to the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, he lost to Patrick Waugh. Uh, <laughs> true. Uh, 17 points in those 24 games. But, I mean, this guy in the playoffs, 233 points in 200 playoff games. Scored 106 goals in 200 playoff games. That is, I mean, a guy scoring every other game in the playoffs. That's a beauty right there. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a great playoff career. And uh, also won a bronze medal in 1998. I believe 1998. That's yeah, correct. It was yeah. like his last thing that he did. He played his final year, played for the Colorado Avalanche, scored five whopping goals. First year that the uh, NHL players came in to the Olympics. So he scored, he had six, five points in six games in the Olympics. Pretty and, dang good. And he had 22 and 70 <laughs> during the regular season for Colorado. So he was saving it all up for the Olympics. There you go. Yeah. Um, number two. Yeah. Same. Yari Curry. But number one, I have. Timu Solani, obviously, I think, you know, oh, most people I must have missed him. <laughs> I think most people are going to debate who's number one and number two here. And you could I mean, you could make a it doesn't it doesn't matter who you put in here. I don't think there's any argument against the other guy. But for me, I think what drove it more for me is one, I got to see Timu Solani play a lot more. But then two, Yari Curry, for me, he he never really drove the offense, right? It was all sure, from Gretzky. He Gretzky, and yeah. came, he you know, played on Gretzky's line. Yes, and that, absolutely. And you can't knock him for you know taking passes fault. from Gretzky. Yeah, it's not his I, fault. Yeah. He still had to put him in the net. Exactly. But to me, Solani went wherever he was, and he always drove a line. He was like Patrick Kane, right? He I mean, scored 68 goals in 85-86 and 71 <laughs> in 84-85. 71 goals! And you don't hear about this guy. He probably is the most underrated player uh, in terms of like guys who've scored 70 goals, who else has scored 70 goals? Mario Lemieux. The guy at number one. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Gretzky. Brett Hall. Timu Solani. Brett Hall. 
think that's about it. Did, uh, did, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, pretty good company. Good, pretty good company. Oh, no, Alex McGilney did. Oh, you're right, yeah. With he Buffalo. 76. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, speaking of 76, talk about a rookie season for our number one, uh, my gosh, Timu Solani. I don't think this will ever be broken, or at least for a while anyways, depending on how the NHL goes. But, uh, man, 132 points, 76 goals, just ridiculous. Phil Esposito. That, I was okay. like, somebody in the 70s did. Phil Esposito had 76 as well. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah, 71 is tied for 10th all time for a goal scored. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so Solani comes in at number one for me. but Yes, Timu Solani certainly number one. I mean – you think about Finnish born players, you think about this guy. I mean, he, the Finnish flash. He played forever. Yes, he only has the one Stanley Cup, but it really it's not his fault who he played for. And <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious, 76 goals in 84 games is insane. Uh he also had he had 132 points that year. It's not like he just scored a bunch of goals. He have, only had 56 assists. Uh at other year, I mean, he had a 51, another 52 goal season, a 47 goal season. And then he kind of like goes on this little lull. He got hurt a little bit, wasn't super healthy. And then, oh, he scored 48 <laughs> when he's 36 years old, scored 48 goals. And uh, even as a 40 year old, he scored 31 goals uh, for the wow. for the Ducks in 73 games, had 80 points that year. Yeah, you um, know, uh, our number one and number two pick actually played together for a season. Yeah, in Winnipeg, right? No, in, in, my, in Anaheim with the Ducks. Oh, in Anaheim. Yeah. Oh, early on. Yeah, back 96, 97. Yari Curry actually put up, I believe it was, uh, yeah, 35 points. Wow. Timu Solani put up 109 on that season. Quick but, 109, playing with Paul Correa. Yeah, 10-year age difference, but, you know. Again, I, I think about, like, when you talk about Stanley Cups, obviously, you know, the Oilers were so dominant. I think if the Ducks had had, you know, one or two more pieces on that team, they probably could have won a couple Cups in that era, maybe the late 90s, you know, because... I mean, they they had it going Paul, between Paul Correa, Timu Solani, and Steve Ruch, and that was a pretty good, you know, top line. But they really didn't have much support outside of that. And you think you could have yeah. got a little bit more secondary scoring and a decent defense, man. That team was okay. They also came up again. I remember uh, what it was like the those late '90s. I think they're the '98 '99 series here where the Ducks lost in four games. That was to the Red Wings. Yeah, who, well, who everybody did. to the conference finals there that year. 96 97 looks like they I think they lost to the Red Wings that year too didn't they I think so I, I want to say that it was but uh well that is our list Finnish born players top 10 uh, good luck finding a better list out there than Justin's because he remembered everybody <laughs> thank you uh yeah no no problem uh, let us know what you thought of our list find us on Twitter at OT Hockey Talk. You can also go to OTHockeyTalk.com, find all our episodes, and uh, find a great place to subscribe. Until the next time, we'll talk to you soon.